Welcome back. This is Dan Havey with CF Ninja Hacks, and today we're going to continue talking about ClickFunnels 2.0, and in particular, we're going to talk about the page structure. Now, if you are a 1.0 user, a ClickFunnels 1.0 user, you are going to see a lot of this as being very, very, very familiar, but they've had some major improvements along the way as well. So let's just take a look at it. We're going to just start building a page like we normally would. We're back here on our demo test page. And so like in a 1.0, the sections are green. And so if we want to add a new section, we just click here and we say we want, do we want a full page, wide, small, medium, just like 1.0. So let's just say we want a full page section in there. And now the nice thing is in 1.0, it would have closed the sidebar. Here, it gives you the opportunity to add your row in right away. So let's just say we want to put in a three-column row. So it gives us our three-column row. And you notice the rows were blue. So sections are green, rows are blue, and now elements are orange, just like in 1.0. And we're going to put a headline element in here. And again, it keeps the sidebar open. So I can now also put and a subheadline and a paragraph and an image and we're often flying because we're able to just very quickly go boom 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 and just put in all of these elements then we can come down here and we can say we want to add another section and let's add another section and then we can put in oops it had already opened up the row for me i mean i'm so used to 1.0 it had already opened it up so i could choose the row and we're going to put in our two column row and then in here we can go ahead and we can put in our elements again as well and i have my font size set really small here or else i have my screen really small um, either way doesn't really matter because we're just looking at the structure at this point and while we're at it let's just put in let's just put in a couple more things just so we have some content in here as we look at the rest of this so we'll just do this real quickly and then we'll do one more section down here so we have full width section we're going to go two column row and then we're going to do an image here and we're going to do a video right here so here we have our page already laid out you saw how quickly i was able to just go click 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 and drop in all of these elements and build out the overall structure of my page now the nice thing you can do once you have this all built out like this you can come in here and you can click on the layout and if you recall in 1.0 they had little tabs at the top for section rows columns and then elements well here everything is all together and it shows you in the tree structure format just like you would see the visualization for html laid out with everything with the child elements uh, going in and out in a tree format like this and of course as you hover over everything it will tell you exactly where you are the section here is green the section here is green it's easier to see right there and it will show the, the green lines and we can go to row and it shows you the blue box around the row and the columns as well we got the two columns right here and then you got your orange paragraph and bullet point boxes over here on the left so it's all pretty cool and you can also um, in this case here, let me see here if I click on that. Okay, so that I just changed that now to desktop only, which I didn't really want to do. Uh, so I just clicked on it again. So by clicking on the little phone icon, I just made that entire section desktop only. And now I will click on the uh, the computer here and it should be now mobile only and it clicked me immediately into mobile view anytime you click on anything to do with mobile especially like uh, fonts for mobile or anything like that it will automatically kick you into it and then you see up here at the top you can go back and forth between your desktop and your your mobile device and then here we're saying show everything but we could say let's just show me the sections or just show me the rows or you get the idea, just give me the elements, or we can show everything, and again, you have the nice DOM tree showing on the screen here again. And before I forget, I should turn this back on so we can see it on my desktop. So there we have our DOM tree. We got all the elements laid out in much, much better format than they had in 1.0 because you can see everything 
all in one shot like that. And then uh, the next thing I want to show you is let's go down here into this uh, picture element, this image element right here. And you're going to see up here at the top is they have the entire breadcrumbs of all of the, you, know, you got the body, the section, the row, the column, and the image. So if I'm in this image, you know, sometimes, especially 1.0, it was tough if you were in something to try to get somewhere else, especially if there was negative margin or there was very little padding uh, on something. You couldn't sometimes get into elements because they sometimes, especially if you had negative margin, they might be stacked one on top of each other and you're trying to get to the one behind it. Well, if you can get to to anything in there you have the possibility now of being able to go from the image and you can click right here and you now this took us into the settings for the column and then if you click on row it takes us into the settings for the row and the section of course and then here we can even go as far down as the body itself whereas all you can really set in here in the body level is the uh, background on it so we can put in a red background color or something like that and it's only showing down here because I suspect all of these have a built-in background color yeah they already had a background color because I set that up there uh, but if we went to background color here and we took that out um, now it'd be transparent and we could see that coming through but we want to take out that other color we'll just turn this off by clicking on that little button and it turns it right back off again and then somewhere up in here now it's in the settings up here in the settings this is where you set the background which again is the body element itself the body portion of the HTML on the page so that is really it for an overview of the structure on the page. Just remember the coolest thing, again, like I said, I think is the layout here is so super cool and how easy it is just to be able to go through here. Oh, and a couple of things I didn't, I didn't show you is that you can actually move these elements around. So if I grab a hold of that, I can just pull that up on top of the other one. So let's say the subheadline now we're going to put on top of the paragraph, and now it's on top of the paragraph. This headline I'm going to pull down all the way down into here. Now it's all the way down there. I did not have to come in here and move it. Of course, we still can. We can move it just like we did in uh, 1.0 you can move anything around anywhere you want in there but also if you're in the layout you can do it that way but then also let's just go in here to sections and let's just take this top section now and let's drag that down here to the bottom and drop it in there now that one went down to the bottom or didn't it let me see what happened here did it did it move it um well, it's definitely moved it now. Now we definitely have the big one up here at the top. But again, just like in 1.0, you can also move your sections uh, by doing it this way. And for some reason, this image decided to leave us here. Um, again, this is in beta, so there are there are glitches on occasion in here, and I think I lost a headline up here at the top too. Uh, but again, um, occasionally things will disappear off the page. Now it just popped back in. That's funny. Um, so yeah, so it's still a, a little little wonky at times, but overall, I think it's uh, really good. And of course, we can do everything we did before. We can clone this and put another headline back over here on the top of this as well. And then one last thing to show you here in the layout, because I almost forgot about it, is you can come in here and you can see these three dots showing up here on the side, and we can click on that, and we can go into the settings then for the row, so that opens up the settings uh, for that row, column, uh, section, whatever you want to be in. I mean, you can do it for the columns right there as well. And then um, also what you can do is when you're in here, let me uh, click on that one again. Oops, where did I go there? Uh, so let's go back here. So actually, I guess, yeah, if you click on this here, no, that took me out of there. Um, okay, that took me out. How did I get to the, must have been, I clicked on here and, and I didn't see it and I clicked on the settings. But you can also just simply duplicate the row right here on the spot. Of course, like everything else, uh, you can come in here and you can duplicate it by cloning it right here as well. But if we go back into the, the layout, uh, we'll click on the three dots again. We can also rename this element. So let's just do it on the top one here. We can rename this element. So right there. And so we're just going to say here, we're going to do a 
test section and then we can click on the little check mark and it saves it and that's really nice if you got a bunch of sections upon sections upon sections even though the beauty is this layout is so much better than it was in 1.0 and one of the problems with 1.0 was always let's say I came up here and I said okay we want to show this or we want to hide this one on mobile or you want to hide it completely not just on mobile we want to just uh, hide this section in total we would just say okay we're going to hide this from all devices well now it, it now if you do that and you hit it on both of them here you can still see it in the layout on 1.0 if you hit a section you couldn't see you could see the section name when you opened it up and you could obviously turn it back on if you wanted it to but you couldn't see the rows the columns or the elements that were inside of it here we can still see all of those elements inside of this hidden row and if need be we can pull them out of here we can move them around we can just click on it and go in and work on it and edit it you didn't uh, in in 1.0 in order just to get to it you had to unhide that section and so that really was kind of uh, difficult sometimes so we'll click on that we'll open it back up and we'll go to all so that again is one more thing that is nice and I'll go back to regular uh, desktop there so we can see a little bit better and so again renaming those things is nice now in 1.0 when you renamed it at this level what you were doing was actually changing what uh, the attribute known as a data title or a data attribute that's what you were actually changing here it's just a name that they're giving to each one of these elements so any one of these elements we can come in here and we can rename it and we can just call this one my row right there whatever you want to call it and that way you can keep track a lot better of what each one of these sections is but again like I said with the layout the way it is and how easily and nicely it highlights it's over on the left as you scroll down here it's not nearly as necessary as it was before but where the change in the name really comes in handy is when you're doing something like putting in a button and you're going to say on the button I want to scroll to this thing I want to hide and show the different elements so let's just come back up here and instead of calling this um, test section let's just call this one here uh, Buffalo I don't know why I came up with Buffalo and then this next one down here below it that's not what I wanted to do uh, let's go back into the layout here this next one down here oops it didn't save it um, so let me see here let's click on that let's rename it and uh, we're gonna call this uh, what was it what did I say we're gonna call buff Hello, did I spell that right? I think so. All right, so now we'll do that. Okay, now it changed it. And now this one here, just because we did it, we'll call this one banana. B-A-N-A-A, -A -A. is that how you spell it? Um, okay, now, so let's say I just dropped this button down, down here. So now let's take a look at this button. And so we're going to do a show or hide. Normally you're going to do um, submit the form. But in this case here, we're going to do a show or hide. And then we come in here and we can easily see now that we got our buffalo section here. And if I come up to my layout and let's just say we're going to take this section and we're going to drop it. No, it didn't move it. Let me see because I didn't pull it down far enough. So we're going to take our buffalo section here and we're going to move it down below this one. So now we got it right there, and now we come back into our button, and we come to our hide show. Then we're coming down here. We got section, section, row, everything. We get down here. Oh, here's our buffalo right there. So we're going to say we want to show that section, and then we want to, as we begin, we scroll down here, we want to hide our banana. And so then we got a buffalo, and it tells us it's a section right here. And the banana is a row, and then we got our headline element and all that. And again, it would also come in handy when you're doing a scroll to. So we say we're going to scroll to, and we'll scroll down here. We want to scroll to our buffalo section right down there on that button click. And so now what else do we have here? Oh, and here we can do a move up or move down so if i click on move down it's going to take the entirety of the section and it's going to move it down below the section below it so there we go we just flip flop these two sections but again like i said you can also do it uh, with the little arrows over here if you want to 
as well. And let me see, was there anything else in here? And of course, you can come in and delete it there. But as always, you can also delete it here. You can save it here. And we'll talk about that when we talk about universal sections, especially. And then we could also open up the uh, code editor right there. And so we could open up the code at the bottom of the page. More on that at a later time. And then the other thing I guess I really didn't say that is actually really super cool too is if I want to edit this section, I don't have to come up here and click on the gear. In 1.0, you always had to click on the gear to open up a section or a row or something like that. And because of that, sometimes it was really difficult to get the green part to show up or the blue part to show up because you know a lot of times where where there was like no uh padding especially on things it really messed with it but here it shows up real readily but the nice thing about this is i can click right here and it opens that section up if i come into this row i can click on the row and we'll see here that opened up the row but now if i come back into the row again if i click here it still gives me the row but if i come over here i click on this gear that opens up the column for me so it's pretty sweet here on a text element. If you click on it, it always opens up this bar. So for a text element, this is the only one where you have to actually come in and click on the gear to get it to open up the sidebar. Whereas with this image element, you click on it and it just opens it up straight away. You don't have to go in and click on the gear. So that should be it for everything I wanted to show you about the structure, the new editor, and some of the new cool features. So that is it for the structure on the page. If you have any questions, just let me know.